Hi, I think we're streaming. I think we're live. That's kind of exciting. So I am going to just kind of low-key be playing some naval action tonight. Um, I want to see how streaming works for me, maybe show off some of the ships I've gotten. I've been playing for a little bit. I've got an okay rank uh, after Ravager. Let's uh, just double check the pirate ranks because they don't, you know, make sense with like real ranks. So you got Thief, Rascal, Scoundrel, Marauder, Plunderer, Raider, Ravager, Demon, Devil, and Curse. So I'm getting up there. When you get up to those top level ranks, you can start to have like real ships of the line. I think the heaviest ship I can crew is the Indefatigable right here. I bought one from someone named Sea Sprite who I've not otherwise encountered. And uh, the Indefatigable is uh, fifth rate, which... Um, the rating system for uh, um, ships in this period was based on the number of guns they could carry. So the size of their broadside, essentially. Uh, the Indefatigable began, I think, actually as a fourth rate, the actual historical one, and then was resied down to uh, very heavy frigate as a fifth rate. Um, so it's like the heaviest, toughest fifth rate in the game. So I'm almost up to the, to the fourth rates. Ships of the line start at third rate and above. Um, it isn't all good to be a real heavy, powerful ship, because then you're slower. You're a floating gun deck, right? Like, you're, you're an artillery platform. And you want to have some smaller, faster ships around that can maybe uh, protect your stern, because the stern is always the weak part. You don't want people shooting your stern. They destroy your rudder. They rake your entire ship. Everything is bad. So, um, yeah, the Indefatigable is pretty good, though. I'm excited. Uh, let's take her out. The port interface that you're looking at here is terrible. As it says down in the corner, test UI, please ignore. So, please ignore. I want to have a mission. Right now I have this one. You can see on the map, it's up near Little Inagua. Ooh, there's a fleet wreck up there. I'm not going to do that. That's a little too hazardous for me right now. Let's just take a nice easy trip up to do this. So let's sail. And once we get out into the open world, let me just make sure I actually put crew on this. Yes, I did. All my crew are on here. Cool. All right, let's talk navigation. Here on the chart, which as you can see is the Caribbean plus eh, a little bit of areas I wouldn't call the Caribbean, South Carolina, even up to North Carolina. Right up there, Wilmington. That's where I've sailed. I mean, like in real life, not in the game. I haven't gotten up there. It's the corner of nowhere. Why would you go there? So to navigate, you actually have to like navigate. I know how to get around this bit of coast, so I'm going to double click there to put the protractor there. Right click over here to plot a course. So now let's get out there. And <clears throat> naturally, we are going to be sailing almost directly into the wind because I am so good at timing my journeys that way. Let's not sail directly into the sandbar, that would be a mistake. Let's get all our sails out, go around these shallows. And uh, make our way northeast, right into the wind. So this is open world sailing. It's a little bit simplified. Um, when you get into like an actual combat instance, sailing gets more detailed. Um, oy vey, what am I doing? Oh god, yeah. When you sail into the wind on a square rigged ship like this, you basically don't move. So let's tack out. I'm gonna send myself more or less northwest, and then take a big tack out to somewhere like here, and then go more or less east over to there. Um, who is this? This is a small pirate in what looks like one of the starting ships, maybe even a basic cutter. Hey, you're doing okay. 
mon biter, mon bite. Are you French? I don't know. Um, yeah, so on a square rig ship like this, you can't sail directly into the wind. And look, northeast is right where the wind is coming from now. You can see down in the lower right. That's where the uh, uh, that's where the wind and heading indicator is in the open world in the battle it's in the lower left because the battle instances are just different in every way uh they need to work on some ui issues um oh i am so impatient to just start going northeast but i know it's bad for me i know i'm just gonna sluggishly move into the wind Ooh, custom white painted bologna that's too big for me to crew so I couldn't afford it anyway, even if I could buy, even if I could crew it. Um, yeah, so in the open worlds, uh, sailing is simplified. It's basically, you know, point and go. You can even sail directly into the wind. So if you have like a long hour long journey or whatever, just set your course, leave it, keep an eye out for anyone who might try to raid you or, you know, attack you at sea. But other than that, you're good to just kind of, you know, leave it on attack. Um, Granted, you will almost not move at all into the wind, but the wind will move eventually. It'll come from the side, it'll come from behind, you'll be fine. Um, on a square-rigged, uh, fully-rigged ship like this, uh, you're going to sail best on a beam reach or a broad reach. So when the wind is coming uh, from you know across the, the side to side of your ship or from a little bit behind that. Um, there are four and after rigged smaller things, uh, unrated sixth rates that have uh, four and after rigs, and they can sail even faster into the wind because rigging is so cool. I love it. I said this was going to be low key, and now I'm like just excitedly talking about ships. Um, welcome to my life. <laughs> I'm sitting here uh, playing a game about pirates. I've got my my concertina handy for, you know, playing sea songs, uh, if uh, it should come to that, which, yeah, probably not on this channel. I'm not very good. <laughs> Never know. I might sing, though. I sing as I walk down the street. Um, yeah, all right. I'm starting to think that we can tack. So, again, in a battle instance, you really have to be careful about tacking across the wind, because you might actually, like, go backwards be taken aback, to use the technical term, if you uh, really screw it up. So let's still go a bit north, because I think we're not even at Ocean Bite yet. I think we're probably like here, so we want to go that way. So yeah, the main map doesn't show you where you are. You have to actually navigate by landmarks and compasses and stuff like that. And if you don't get your heading exactly right, and your trip is long enough, you'll end up somewhere else. It's cool. It happens. Um, you never know. You might end up uh, just breezing right between these islands if you don't pay attention, and then you're somewhere up here. I mean, you could make your way up to Bermuda if you wanted, which the Russians control? This is an alt history that is super weird. Um, they decided to include the uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, um, the Russian Empire, uh, the Prussian Kingdom, Prus Kingdom of Prussia, um, and give the Danes and Swedes a lot more like impact than they ever actually historically had. Historically, the Danes and Swedes had like little bits of the Virgin Islands and around here, Bowenwind, Bovenwind. Um, but yeah, it's a game, right? So like you know, history has to go off the rails. That's how we do it. Um, there are some ports that you can't conquer, like New Orleans, I think, is unconquerable. Um, I know that the national capitals are unconquerable, so, um, that's a county capital. Where is it? Somewhere down here, the French have a national capital. Fort Royal. There we go. So that will always be French. And likewise, Mortimer Town, where we set out of, will always be pirates. Meanwhile, we as the pirates are struggling against the Prussians. We need to take the coast northern uh, Hispaniola there back. We need to take Salina Point back. That's urgent. 
And the Americans are, you know, making inroads on the Bahamas. Alas, alas. All right, let me go back to this map and actually look where I'm going. Make sure no one's, yeah, it's far away. We don't have to worry about them. Yeah, I think I'm not paying enough attention to where I'm actually going. Oops. Okay. Uh, pirates and lynx. So, yeah, if you press shift, you can do a spyglass, which you can zoom in further on. Look at that lynx. The lynx, fore and after eight, it's beautiful. One of the fastest ships in the game, and definitely fastest sailing upwind. You just can't catch it if it decides to go that way. Um, I love it. But, you know, it's light. It's a, it's a cutter, really. It's meant for uh, interfering, intercepting, and um, delivering messages. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Um, ah, there we go. So that crossed swords up ahead. Let me look at it through the spyglass for you. Ooh. Um, indicates the combat marker on the map. Right? This one that I'm going towards. So I'm just going to sail towards it. I'm going to adjust my course a little bit. Get the wind a little bit more across my decks. And also point myself more directly towards it. So I click it. And when I get close enough up here in the upper right, it'll let me hop into the combat instance. Now, there are a lot of fifth rates, and some of them can give uh, an indefatigable run for their money. Um, I mean, at least with me as captain, I'm not that great. Um, I tend to prefer speed and maneuverability. I tend to be doing a lot of solo stuff. So um, if I get something like uh, Renome, which is uh, the, one of the lighter and quicker uh, fifth rates um, in this combat, I'm probably going to, you know, try a little bit and maybe run away quickly. Um, if I get something, I don't know, some kind of frigate that I can face off against, I'll try my best. All right, combat instance. AI combat, you start face to face. There's a countdown timer, 30 seconds or so. Air frigate. All right, I think we can make this happen. Let's make full sail. I'm going to make the fore and aft cannon be a uh, chain shot so I can try to wreck their sails, slow them down. Because if I can really destroy their maneuverability, I can just, you know, sit behind their stern and rake them stern to stem. Like you do. Um, all right. Let's head towards them. Unfortunately, they're probably going to get the weather gauge, meaning that they will be upwind of me. Um, that lets them basically decide whether and how they want to engage. Fortunately, the AI will always want to engage. You know, when you are downwind, you kind of only have the choice to run away or let the other engage. What flag are they flying? Oh, Prussians. Nice. There's a real enmity between the pirates and the Prussians right now. Uh, I mean, this is an AI, so like, who cares, right? But it's, you know, it's the kayfabe of the whole thing. I'm gonna look out over the bowsprit from those bow chasers that I've got. Nah. So here's the thing about the indefatigable. You've got to pay attention to what bits of it you're crewing. You don't have enough crew to fully man all the stations. So I am kind of urgently hoping that my crew will finish loading the cannons. Okay, we have them on this side at least. No, I'll just depower. That'll be quicker with fewer. Oh, no, no, no. I was not paying attention. And we ram into them. Luckily, we've got a pretty strong bowsprit here. Uh, how'd we do? Yeah, we fared worse than they did. Um, let's get the sails back up. Let's see if we have the means to execute a turn. Ugh. 
Not a great start. Could be worse, could be raining. All right. So you can control the foremast and the mainmast and mizzenmast separately um, in a battle instance, which matters for tight turning. All right, we're gonna just do this. That was terrible. What was I thinking? Oh my god. <sighs> Should have just done it cannon by cannon. Oh god. I also totally lost track of the direction I was heading, which is bad, because now I'm facing almost in irons, almost directly into the wind, trying to turn myself around. Apparently I cannot talk and pay adequate attention to what I'm doing when sailing. Let me damage their uh, Let me damage their sails just a little bit. Barely enough to make a difference. Let's make full sail. Let's uh, get out of this. Then I think... There we go. Okay. I'm adjusting my sails backwards because I forgot what point of sail we were at. Let's do that. And let's fire a test shot. There we go. That's good eight or so shots into their hull. Now we can get around. Maybe fire off another round of uh, chain into their sails while the men are slowly reloading the broadsides because I am de-emphasizing gunnery right now. Um, my broadsides are slow to reload under any circumstances on a ship like this. All right, coming round, almost facing them. Yeah, did a little bit more damage to their sails. And now, we are going to rake them as we go past. They're raking us too, but you know, we can take it, I hope, I think. Ugh. That was in the middle of their turn, which was not the best time to do that, but oh well. We haven't really taken much structural damage yet, neither have they. So in the upper left and upper right, you can see us and them. Um, there are, uh, there's the stern armor, the bow armor, the port and starboard armor, and then in the middle is the structure. And that's uh, the thing that really matters. Once your structure starts going, you start taking on water real quickly. You can't move. You start just like completely dying. It's very bad. Um, at that point, it's almost too late for you. Oh yeah, that was a broadside. Their, um, their starboard armor is almost gone. Well, not almost gone, it's halfway gone, which is good. I'm, you know, taking damage in lots of different places, but doing kind of okay. But if you can burst through the armor on one side and then keep raking that side, well, then by all means, like, you know, keep doing that. Let's see. I don't want to actually go too slow. I think battle sails are fine. Good eight hits on the hull. I'm gonna fill another deck and they're getting out of the way so let's leave it at that. Let's get people back in the sails. Maybe we can get off a few quick chain as we spin around. Uh, when you fire chain, you want to aim up to get through the sails. In that case, I more or less missed them. But also, uh, when you're firing your stern chasers or your bow chasers like that, it, you're pretty much going to miss. It's pretty much a waste. Um, you've got to 
uh, lead enough for the order to fire to be heard, and you've got to lead enough for the cannonball to actually get there. So um, on two accounts you have to lead, and you're turning around, so it's going to be spread across. Nothing good there. So yeah, I'm sailing side by side with them. I kind of want to close a little bit, um, not least of all because sailing directly downwind is actually slower than sailing uh, a little bit on a beam or a broad reach. Um, but also just because I tend to get up close for brawling, I guess. I don't want to do long range sniping in this game. It doesn't seem natural with cannons. And my crews are Reloading the cannon just as quickly as they can. Let's see. That's just about the right height. Let's fire a lot of lead balls into their sides. There we go. Their starboard armor is almost completely gone now. Like, not even. No, I'm going to do full sails, but I'm going to depower. I think I'm sailing mostly uh, with the wind, so my staysails, which are the sails that run, you know, uh, bow to stern, aren't a huge component of the power I've got right now. So if I depower, it won't adjust my speed much, but it'll be just enough, I hope. You really want to hit them just below the waterline, if at all possible, because then they take on water. Um, that's a little hard to do, and I'm just going to destroy their structure instead. As we get real close, my other broadside comes in, and we just empty a full 13 balls into the side. Mm. Now, you'll notice I am starting to speed up relative to them, partially because they're taking on water. With that little structure, they're going to be slowing down. Pretty acutely. Let's get another nine into them. So when you fire a broadside, it's actually great to do it directly side on because um, the game calculates the angle that uh, a ball hits and makes adjustments to the effective armor appropriately. If a ball hits armor that's too thick, it'll just bounce off. So it's really pretty important to. Uh, oh my. God, I need to slow down. Don't want to run past them. Don't want to run past them. Yeah. Without much side armor, most of these balls are going to penetrate anyway. Um, good, good, good. The extra nine was just for, just for funsies, I guess. All right, let's not be completely stopped now, because they have no hope. Their structure is completely gone. But... I have hope. I don't want to lose more armor than I have to, especially more structure. I think it seems to me that uh, structure is more expensive to repair than armor. I'm not 100% on that, though. Just wrecking their sails, just because I don't like them. Because they're Prussians. All right. Turning around, I want to loot that ship. So when it sinks, I want to be right next to it if possible. Now they're hitting my starboard, which is the heavily armored side still, because they beat up my larboard, as the period would have it. Port, as modern uh, parlance would have it. They beat up my larboard side pretty well. Yeah, so in the 1850s, I want to say, the Royal Navy decided that the term should be uh, port, not larboard, because they realized that larboard and starboard sounded too similar. It took them a long time to realize that, I feel. Like... Maybe someone should have said, hey, let's differentiate these terms just a little bit earlier. So I'm not going to sail directly into the wind, because I can't. I'm in a battle instance. And uh, down in the lower left, you can see which way the wind is coming from. I'm just going to slowly try to make my way upwind. This is the worst. But they're sunk. I don't have to like get there in time. The wreck stays. It's not like, you know, goods will be lost. Which is weird, but it's a, you know, a simplification I can live with. 
So in the meantime, let's look at the indefatigable. So that, my friends, is what happens when you let them beat up on one side of you. Look at all those holes. Armor just wrecked. I mean, as you can see, it's almost gone. Compare that to my starboard. Yeah, there are a few dings, but it's pretty okay. What you really have to look out for is holes below, below the waterline or down this way. Yeah, they hit my stern a little, but not too bad. They can knock out cannons, and knocking out your stern chasers is no fun. Oh, I am going backwards now. The wind has shifted. Let's, let's wear. So wearing is when you make a turn by turning your stern to the wind. I'm in fact going negative two point some knots, which means I'm uh, turning the helm the reverse way. It's ultimately like driving a car, right? Like when you're going backwards, the steering is reversed. But now I've picked up speed, so I'm gonna slam the helm the other way, all the way to larboard. And make my way slowly around. The controls in the game say left and right and front and back, and that makes me a little sad. I kinda kinda wish they would get with the theme and maybe communicate a little bit of uh, nautical language, right? Oh well. Uh, this might be too much trouble. Usually an AI ship is gonna have like an upgrade or like some rum, something like that. Nothing super valuable, so maybe I should just give up on that. Um, so, yeah, as long as I'm here, I'll talk real quick about sailing. Let's pick up some speed. We're going to go on a broad breach, which means that the wind is coming from just over the side and to the stern. So, we're going a respectable 10 knots or so. Um, I know it feels so slow compared to the open world, but the open world is sped up. All right, picking up speed. Approaching our maximum speed of 12 knots, I think. 12.6 or something is the most this can do. Now, if you want to turn, you can use the rudder. You can double tap a key to slam it all the way in that direction and lock it. So I can do double A to move the rudder all the way to the larboard, or I can do double D to move the rudder all the way to the starboard. I'm going to say port, because the Royal Navy was right. It is confusing. Anyway. But if you want to turn tightly, you've got to use your sails. Now, if you are pointing uh, more than 90 degrees off the wind, like your, your bow is pointing you know, downwind of your stern, um, i.e. you're on the side of that circle that has, you know, 270 and 90 and stuff like that, then you want to slam the rudder and slam your foresails in the same direction and slam your main and mizzen in the opposite direction. There's more nuance to it than that. You're actually managing wind pressure and you don't want to always just slam your sails, but in the heat of battle, I tend to just say, put it all the way, I'll deal with the, with the rest. And then if I'm going to go the other way, I double E, double D, double Z, to move the foresails in the direction of the turn and move the main and mizzen in the opposite direction. So what you're doing there is you're saying, like, get all the wind pressure you can on the foresails and none on the main and mizzen until you're around the turn and then swap that. And then that'll start by turning the, the bow more and the stern less, and then it'll swap and turn the bow less and the stern more, and that'll tighten the turn. And now, coming up to a beam reach, and let's reset things. You can hit F to just set your sails back to auto, which will optimize for speed, not for turning. So, if you're at a beam reach and you want to turn into the wind, first recognize that on a ship like this, that's risky. But what you'll do is swap that. Your main and mizzen will turn in the same direction as the rudder, and your foremast will turn counter to it. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the starboard, so DDQQCC. And that way, 
very quickly into the turn, um, the foremast will start getting no wind pressure, and the man in mizzen will get all of that, and it will sweep across the wind. Hopefully I had enough speed to just do this. And then the foremast will get all of the wind pressure, and the main and mizzen will get none of it. Ooh, I am losing speed quick. Okay. Slam the rudder the opposite direction. I'm going to sail backwards just a little bit until I pick up enough speed to set the rudder back. There we go. I should have done it as soon as I was positive, but, you know, I was distracted by delicious scotch brought to you by. Cool. And now we're sailing the opposite way. That wasn't too bad a turn. Could have been hairy if they were, you know, right there shooting cannon at us, but we made it. Now, there's one final consideration when you are in battle, and that is heal. As you can see, the wind is from my port, um, and that means that my port guns are facing up in the air, and my starboard guns are pointing down towards the water. And the game does model this, so I can't lift these too high, especially as, you know, I have full sail and all of that, and so the ship's healing over a lot. I can angle them very low. And on this, oops, on this side, I can't angle them any lower than this. I'm trying. It just won't drag. But I can angle them way up into the air. Look at that. I'm going to be shooting people on the shore by accident. Ooh, geez, I might actually be hitting the shore. No. <laughs> Just hitting beachgoers, you know. That was hmm, maybe a bad idea. I'm a pirate. So if you want to reduce heal, one quick way is to uh, furl your stasels, because they provide a fair amount of heal. And another way is to just have there be less sail. You'll go slower. Um, so I tapped B, which is a quick way to power down to battle sails, which is like 40% sails. You'll see my sailors are doing their best. They've furled the gallants. They're furling the courses. And now we're sailing just with the topsails. Um, and my heel is almost non-existent. Look at that. Almost level in the water. So yeah. Let's get out of this battle instance. I'm going to head to Little Inagua, and I will bid you good night once I make my way into port safely, which I hope I will. Now, you can repair at sea. Um, you can repair at sea, and I don't really need to navigate there. I can see it from where I am, but still. Um, <laughs> it's habit. Um, and it is slower to repair at sea in a battle instance. There's a big cooldown. It doesn't do it completely. That makes sense, right? Like, you care about the battle. Um, it's much quicker in the overworld. You can just click up here, go to repair. You can then tap some repair stuff. I'm not going to. I'm just going to spend gold on it. Let's go to manage crew and send more crew on magic boats all the way out to your, to your ship. Um, no matter where they are, they just show up. Um, so usually I'll repair just as soon as I hop out of a battle instance, um, if I've got a long way to go to a port. Ooh, that's tempting. I, I'm not gonna do it. I have to have to wait a minute, and that's just too long. I could sit and repair though, and go and help my pirate brethren, or you know I could just repair the ship, and that'd be fine too. So let's go into Little Inagua, and let's see just how much money we spend on repairs. Yeah, 2,565. Not too bad, actually. Much less than we made from that, so it's all good. Send some free crew back, because we want this ship to be fully crewed, since it's already crew limited. Now, my other ships are in Mortimer Town. I can't just hop onto them wherever I want to be, right? Which is frustrating, because I actually have some stuff here. Coal mine. Uh, no, those are that's an ocean bite. Um, I have an iron ore mine and a stone mine, also known as a quarry, here. So I'm going to see how much room I actually have in my hold. Um, and it might be, yeah, it might be enough. I think I can grab some of my resources and 
and uh, it's expensive mining gold or iron, but worth it. Uh, and I'm going to bring them back to Mortimer Town in my armed ship. How heavy is that? Oh god, I've got totally got room for it. And let's quarry some quarry dust. So I'm going to use these things to make more ships. So I'm like a little bit over halfway full. So I should probably stop off at uh, Ocean Bite where I've got my other buildings and pick up some more stuff. That'll be fine. I'll keep streaming for a little bit. Let's uh, go on a journey. Make sure no Prussians attack us. All right. So here we are in Little Nagua. We're going here to Ocean Bite. There's actually a sandbar in the way. And again, I'm sailing almost into the wind. So I'm going to veer a little bit off of the course I plotted, just because I know there's that sandbar at Ocean Bite. Um, let's go, you know, west-southwest. I'm not good at compass points. I should learn them. Um, we're going mostly southwest with a little bit of west added in, just for flavor. Got to let those directions get to know each other, as, uh, you know, to awkwardly paraphrase uh, Binging with Babish. So a lot of what you do when you're sailing the open world is you check up on clan and nation and global chat. And global chat is terrible. It's just people trash talking each other often. Well, have a nice night. Okay, you know, there's some politeness too. I've just encountered a bunch of uh, pirate and Prussian hostility. Oh, this battle with the English is still going on. So uh, combat markers are high up in the air and only you can see them. Open battles that anyone can join into, they're much lower. Um, I'm so tempted, but I have this valuable cargo. I just need to... Uh, not today. Not today. I just need to breeze on by. Um, so that right up there, that Martello Tower is on the end of the sandbar. You can see there's kind of a bit of a sandbar there, and it's blocking the north entrance to the Ocean Bight uh, Harbor. So the wind is, yeah, I'm sailing a little bit into it, but I happen to know a secret about the wind on the overworld. It just travels around counterclockwise. So I know that the wind is going to get more favorable the more I head like this right now. It's going to eventually be coming from the southeast, then the east. It'll just speed me along. I'll be in Ocean Bite well before then, so it's a non-issue. But on a long journey, sometimes it pays to think about that and say, oh, just when we're getting in, the wind's going to be in our faces, and like, what if there are, you know, enemies there? So you can do a little uh, amateur meteorology. Now, I look forward to questions in chat, hypothetically, if uh, anyone wants to throw some questions at me while I'm on the open world in particular, that would be great. Um, obviously none right now, because I haven't told anyone about this stream, because it's mostly an audio test. <laughs> Yay! I want to hear if my normal, like, talking and normal clinking is too much or enough. Um, but I have, by my side here, a nice pile of uh, books on the Age of Sail, and on seafaring society, and, and the Caribbean, and stuff like that. I have a little personal knowledge, too. Um, so, you know, if someone asks me something and I don't know the answer right away, I will look it up. I'll get there. Um, oh, the wind is coming right from the harbor. Let's just, let's just tack our way in. I can't bear to move that slowly. Um, so yeah, I, I don't necessarily focus on naval military history so much as, you know, like commercial and, and social history. That's really my jam. It almost saddens me to have to fire cannons into these things, you know? Like, these these ships are, are beautiful, but if you're not, if you're not engaged in uh, naval warfare with them, I guess you're not 
fully testing your uh, seafaring abilities. It's kind of unfortunate, but you know, the uh, there's not much game without without flying cannonballs. But man, it hurts me to to sink a, a, a beautiful ship. Ah, uh, there's boarding too. I don't really like the boarding mini game much. I'm also not great at it. These might be related. Um, but I'm okay at it, I guess. Um, it's just I keep taking out ships that are better at sinking than at boarding. Not like getting marines on my ships or otherwise sort of focused on that. All right, let's see what we can get here from my other buildings. Lignum Vitae, which is a very heavy wood. Let's see if I can get enough. Even if I can't carry it all, well, I can carry it all. Um, even if I can't carry it all, I can leave it in the uh, warehouse here and pick it up later, which is better than you know failing to accumulate enough or more. Oh, oh, this is this is. This is perfect. This is just enough for this ship. Let's get down to Mortimer Town. Oh. Which means the wind is actually with us on this return journey. Now there's a little bit of a sandbar on the south side too, but it doesn't extend as far. It's got its own Martello Tower. Look at that thing. Just protecting the harbor, the harbor guns. Looks like they, uh, maybe they're calculating heal on the open world, I'm not sure, but they're definitely calculating, you know, waves. So I'm rocking back and forth, which I think is pretty much ornamental, obviously. I'm not firing cannon in the open world. But it's nice to see. Makes you feel like you're at sea. And if you look at the map, you start to know this well. We're here, we're going here, obviously not overland, but there's this promontory, and then there's this promontory, and then we'll come back around. There's a bit of a sandbar there too. And uh, that is our way home. This bay here is a place to get caught by Prussians sometimes if you try and stay close to the shore, if you've got a smaller ship maybe you think you can like you know stay out of the range of their guns no you can't you're no. you want open water so you can run at a point of sail where you're quicker so remember when i was saying like um fore and after rigged ships like that lynx we were looking at are uh, much quicker into the wind yeah a ship like this barely moves into the wind at all that's the great equalizer um i've been caught out at sea in my princeton of chatel which is oh i love it it's a, a privateer. It's a topmast schooner, basically, but it's um, really heavily gunned for its uh, size and sail plan. Really maneuverable because of that sail plan, um, and really heavily gunned. It is so choice. I love it. Anyway, I've been caught out in the open world uh, by someone who saw me sitting there because I had gotten up to make some tea. Bad choice. Um, <laughs> they were like, oh, combat. So, you know, I get back just in time for the combat timer to count down. But as soon as we're in that combat, I get to run away. They're shooting chain at my sails. They're kind of beating up my sails, but it's not enough. Uh, I can sail almost directly into the wind so much faster than them. Uh, so you have to know your strongest point of sail. You have to size up your enemy and say, where are they weak? And I'm going to just go in that direction. I will gain speed. If you've got stern chasers, just throw some chain shot at them to wreck their sails a bit. It'll slow them down. And if you uh, don't have stern chasers, hope. <laughs> just get your men uh, off of gunnery and onto survival, repair, and sailing. Just keep them, you know, uh, making that boat go. Get away from the enemy. Sometimes survival is more important than... I don't know, fighting them for no reason. I think it's very important to be able to avoid uh, battles that you don't want here. Um, 
and it's very important to force battles when you do want them. I've uh, been lucky a few times, harassed some French shipping that should have known better and been able to just run away. Um, <laughs> they were in a pickle in a privateer, two relatively small fore and after rigged uh, vessels. Um, and I was in my Renome, which is fifth rate, but, you know, light and maneuverable compared to this thing. Um, and they decided to stay and fight. And I benefited from that. <laughs> I sunk them both. Uh, I feel bad because, you know, like, there's no way to really have a parlay and demand all their gold. But um, your, your option is fighting. But they really should have known that they could have run. So... Look at that little basic cutter. Someone's starting out. Who are you? Oh, you're the same one. Same one I saw before. Well, good luck to you and fair weather. All right, let's make this turn across the wind, almost stopping. It's so slow. And let's come into Mortimer Town. We've got a fort, a fort, Martello Tower, Martello Tower. Good harbor guns. All right, inching our way in, getting a shallows warning. I don't even care. There we go. Enter Mortimer Town. And let's take all of this lovely stuff that we got, including some fish meat while we were fishing. There's some valuable fish, so you don't always want to convert everything, but grouper are common. So let's just drop this in the warehouse see if we have any spare room. I'm going to sort so things are back in piles. And iron ore, and stone block, and stone block, and salt, and fish meat, and sort. And now I have a lot of raw materials for making more ships. I'm working on getting my craft XP up, um, so as you can see, I'm craft level 13. They track XP like distinctly for your leadership, which is how many your, your rank and how many crew you can command, your crafting ability, which is, you know, are you a good shipwright, and on each ship. So I'm working on leveling up my knowledge of the indefatigable right now, which unlocks more ship knowledges. It's a real nice system. I like it. Anyway, with that, I think I'm going to head off and wish you all fair sailing.